Okay. I guess we're doing it. I guess we gotta do it. We gotta fill this box with spring baits. Is it springtime already? Is it finally time to get back out there and go fishing? I think it is, and I'm pumped about it. So I get asked this question all the time. What are the baits that you're throwing in spring? Or what are the baits you're throwing right now? So we're gonna do a spring bait box. We're gonna go through, we're gonna fill just this one 3,700 size Busby box. This is the Colony 28, and we're gonna pack it full of spring baits. We're gonna talk about what plastics we're throwing right now, what baits we're throwing right now, what should work, and mind you, even though I'm fishing the Midwest, I'm gonna try to stick to baits that are more universally applicable. Okay, so hang with me. I think this is gonna be fun. I think we can make this educational, entertaining, edutaining. I think we can we can nail edutaining today. And we get to do it all on a brand new bench, which I'm super happy about, super proud of. So, so we're gonna take a minimalist approach here. If we had one box to fish from the bank or from a kayak or however you prefer to fish, what would it be full of specific baits, colors, and plastics that you're fishing? We're gonna go through it all. I think this is gonna be fun. This will be an enjoyable one. And uh, hopefully you can just pack your tackle box full and go fish and catch a giant. And then let me know about that because that'd be fantastic. But as we like to do on the channel here all the time, let me know in the comments below, what are you throwing this spring? Give me an idea. I'd love to hear from you guys what you're doing specifically in your regions. All right, before we get to this box, real quick, do me a favor. If you guys like content like this, unboxing videos, reviews, and fishing videos, we do it here on the channel. So consider subscribing. Smash a like on this video, ring that notification bell so you can see when we post more content, and then come hang out with me and my buddy Paul every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. We go live on YouTube. It's a ton of fun, so hopefully we see you there and talk to you in chat on one of our next ones. All right, let's get to this box. What are we throwing in this thing? All right, so it's spring. The water's cold. I was actually just out on the water in my kayak the other day, had the sonar on, water temp red, 40 degrees. There was still ice on my lake, right? Now, you guys further south, it's a little bit warmer. So you're probably approaching that like spawning range, 50 degrees plus. So congrats, I'm super jealous of you. I'll be there in like a month and a half. But let's just consider it colder water temps, slower, maybe a lethargic fish. Uh, I caught a four and a half pounder the other day. And I swear to you guys, I hooked it on a Ned and it just like laid down and said, take me. Like that is how lethargic they are. <laughs> it was like, get me out of here and put me back in the water, please. Uh, so if they're moving slow and they're feeding on different forage and that forage is different colors right now as things change throughout the season, that's the way I try to think of it. What are they feeding on? Are they looking for something moving, something more erratic, something slower, something that pauses? Like, what are they looking for? And I do this like all year round. Think of fishing as a puzzle. You're trying to solve the puzzle. And when you go out fishing and you try, I'm kind of a junk fisherman myself. You kind of try everything and you see what works, what sticks. Then you take note of that, right? Was that a fluke? Did it happen just randomly that that worked out, right? You pissed off a fish at the right moment. Or could this be something that you focus on now for the rest of the day and the rest of the fish are kind of keying in on that and it works, right? So one fish is a coincidence. Two, three, four fish, no longer a coincidence. Maybe you've nailed the technique for the day. That's the juice, stick to it. So I try to have like a really good variety and that's why I love using these Busby boxes because I get to take these little Lego brick trays, look at them, they're actual Legos, and just plug them in in any assortment that I want. And they come in a bunch of different sizes, so I can fit things like spinner baits, buzz baits, and one of these. I can go real big, like some swim baits or some jerk baits, and just piece it all together. So that's what we're gonna do today, but I'm not gonna take nearly as much as I normally do. I have a pretty big kayak, so I'm afforded that amount of space. I can carry a lot more. We're gonna, we're gonna slim things down. Please understand that's hard for me to do, okay? So we're gonna do our best. Here we go. Let's start with this nice big tray right here. Something I like to have all the time be some form of a buzz bait and a spinner bait. So here we've got uh, Strike King Sugar Buzz. It's a free swinging buzz bait, so that's something different, you know, that fish might not be seeing all the time. I love me up here some chartreuse and white in most of the waters. However, we do have a lot of spring runoff. So we are getting like some darker stained water, darker than it normally is the rest of the year, especially in the rivers. The rivers are very murky, very muddy. So you're gonna see some different colors if I'm going to the river. I'm just thinking lake, river, creek, all of the above, what would I have? I would have at least 
one buzz bait. I would go with that one right there. This is just another cool one that I have um, that you guys might like as well. So I think it's from Fish Head and it's a little like under spin as well as buzz bait. Interesting bait, definitely catches fish. Another thing I'm gonna carry is gonna be spinner baits. So again, this is kind of if they're keying in on moving stuff. Uh, what I will do when the water is colder is I will not include, say, a trailer, at least at first. Uh, we'll start small. So I'm trying to think like downsize on everything. Now, of course, you can do the flip side of that. You can upsize and get a bite. It depends on the day. So experiment, try different things. The funny thing to me about fishing is that everybody's right all the time and that's not possible. So personally, I just let the fish be right and whatever they key on is what I go for. There are some, of course, greater schools of thought that you can go with and something like a spinner bait, which looks like those bait fish that your fish are feeding up on is pretty much always a good play. It's something to use as a search bait at first, throw it out there, see if you get any bites, any looks, start seeing any fish moving around, then you can play off of that. Um, but typically I'm starting smaller in the spring. So here we have a Super K Jigs spinner bait. This one, I just love the way they shape the jig heads. I think that they do a good job. They also run pretty dang true. Also got two willow leaves here. I'll go like silver and gold. Typically in the spring, I just like that color pattern. And we got white, which is a fantastic color. However, because we have some murky, dirtier waters, I'll also throw something with a little bit of a bigger profile there where it's dirty and stained. So we got like this longer skirt with a trailer hook here in a fire tiger color, also from Super K Jigs, this time with a Colorado blade. So it's a little more of a thump and then a nice big gold willow leaf, good for low light conditions. So I'll throw that in there. Then I'll go with a color that's up the middle Something like this Booyah Baits Covert. This one is in a white chartreuse and blue. The much bigger gold blade on there, as well as a small Colorado. So it just gives me something a little bit different. So if I'm just taking a couple, and I mean, this tray will fit a ton, but there's like three that I would take. Next up, the next thing I'm thinking is jerk baits. So what I do there is I want a couple shallow, a couple deep, and a couple small, uh, literally that many, like a lot of them. So what we're gonna do, so with those jerk baits, I might start with something like this Mega Bass Vision 110. It's uh, 110 millimeters, so it's definitely a bigger body, bigger profile, but it is a reaction bait. So they will key in on these things. This is in that like bluegill type color, that blue translucent body. I think it's called Blue Ghost, potentially. I don't remember these colors. Nice pearl belly to it too. Fantastic, well-weighted. Just the most insane action these things have. I didn't believe it till I finally got a chance to fish it. These things are legit. They are extremely expensive. So you can always go with something like that Six Sense Provoke. This is in a hog walla color. So a very similar colorway, right? You can see a lot of the differences there between the two, but still well weighted, good rattle to it. Still gonna get those reaction strikes. Got a cool little chartreuse belly on it too. And it's under 12 bucks. So if you wanna save some money, you can always do that. I'm throwing something legit. Go with a natural color. So we have something like this 4K bluegill color from Sixth Sense. This is the Provoke. Uh, it's a 106 millimeter, so it's a little bit shorter. Then I might go with something a little more reflective. This is the Monster Bass Slick Stick 110. So again, just giving me I don't have a lot to bring, so I'm gonna go for as wide a variation as I can. So we got something flashy like that. These are all, by the way, suspending jerk baits. So they either pause for a really long time like the Mega Bass Vision 110 does, or they're gonna slow float to the surface, something like this Monster Bass or the Provoke do. If I've got room for one more big one, I'm gonna throw a white. So the white suspending jerk bait you can't go wrong with. This is again that Six Sense Provoke. Fantastic jerk bait to be thrown around. So there you go. So that goes into one of my long trays here. I can hold four big jerk baits that cover the broad spectrum of colors for me. Cause you really never know. Like this would be a, a river, lake and creek box for me. Like if we're gonna say, oh, what's your one box for spring fishing? It's gonna have to cover a lot of different bodies of water around me. So that's what I'm keeping in mind. So from there, we're gonna go to the small jerk baits. So a couple that I might bring there, be like a small floating jerk bait, like the Smithwick Rattling Rogue. This one comes in like a more chartreuse natural color, which I like a lot. This one's in here, you guys know why. If you watch the channel, this one caught me my PB Pike, uh, but this is a Yozuri Crystal Minnow in a perch natural color. Like having some natural darker colors. And then I might throw something nice and reflective like this Rapala Rip Stop, which is in a silver reflective coating and chartreuse tip. 
If you've got the room, a little white jerk bait. This one right here, I honestly have no idea where I got it from, but I have caught many a fish on it. Just a small profile, white, semi-translucent body with a rattle to it, man. Gets the job done. All right, let's fill another big tray. So we're gonna throw another big tray in here. This one is gonna be for crankbaits, specifically square bills, because I fish the river a lot. So in spring, I'm really keying in on red, orange, brighter colors like that. A lot of your bass are feeding up on crawfish, so you wanna sort of match the hatch, right? That's our goal there. And it tends to give me just more bites that way, no matter what water you're fishing. So that four and a half pounder I caught the other day, that fish's jaw was entirely red, which tells me, and you guys can look this up too, that's where I learn things. Uh, and I learn with you guys as much as I possibly can, feather eating craws. So I wanna have more of that red orange color to it. So I might throw something like this, it's a Strike King Watermelon Red. See that nice translucent red belly there? It's fantastic, love this color. Has a KBD 1.5, so that's gonna run fantastically well. Got something like this, Six Cents. This is the Flat 75. They're flat-sided square bills. I do find like the flat-sided square bills do a good job too, so really good choice here. It's got a little bit of a white belly, so a little different presentation to it, that red and yellow. Rounding out my reds, I've got this Monster Bass Hammerhead. This is the Alex Rudd Special in Rudd Red which is like a freaking hot rod color right there. Uh, I call it ruddered. And that is a great color as well. Great square bill, runs really true. Then we're gonna shake things up. So I'm gonna throw something natural. This is a finesse square bill from Sixth Sense. I like throwing something like that. Gives me a little added variation. And then we're gonna go real heckin' weird. So I'm gonna throw this 13 Fishing Jabber Jaw. It's got a little bladed lip, which moves causing just a totally different look. Uh, it's a reaction style bait. It's like throwing a chatter bait, which you'll see in a second is something I also throw in the spring a lot, but just a great looking bait. Something different they haven't seen should entice some reactions, especially for me on my bigger rivers, which for like around me, if you guys know the Grand Rapids, Michigan area, you know where to like know where to go or you can look it up, but there are some trophy smallmouth waters we're fishing here. So I have a feeling this is gonna hook me up a lot this year. There we go. So we got like five square bills there. We're pretty good. We're pretty good to go. All right, next bin we're gonna fill is for crankbaits. So if I'm in a lake, I can dive a little bit deeper, need some crankbaits. So we're gonna do that. And for that, you know, I'm, I'm throwing them on a low gear ratio reel so I can just hit the floor, like hit the base of the lake and just drag it through all the cover, run into a fish and they bite. Like that's when I'm getting bites on crankbaits right now is around the heavier cover. I kind of luck out. So with that, you can't go wrong with a flat sided crank. So we got the another KVD Strike King bait here with that flat side. That thing's fantastic. Dives pretty dang deep. So we're getting down to like that 15 foot mark in the water column. So I wanna have at least like one good deep diver. Then I might throw some different variations here. So we got some six cents baits to throw around. Just like the translucent, like chromish color of this one here. It's one of their mini cranks. And then we've got, then we got their crush series. This is more of a medium diver right there. And this is the mini. And mainly these are gonna just get me deeper than eight feet. Like my square bills will get me down far enough where I can cover a good amount of the water column from like two to six feet. Then I come back in with these bad boys if we need to get deeper than that, depending on the depth situation and the cover that I'm working. Throw one more on the mix here. This is a Berkeley Grave Digger. This thing is, uh, it's pretty dang beat up but it more closely matches the hatch. We got a sunfish pattern here, but it's just blazing orange, man. It's that bright color. We'll get bit, dives down eight to 12 feet. I love it. Got a real heavy thud rattle to it. Gets the job done. So there's four good crankbaits we can take with us. Next up, let's vary this retrieve. Let's go for some liplesses. Keep it real simple here. I love this thing. This is a blade bait lipless hybrid from Rapala. You guys have to check this thing out. Insane action. Two prong hook at the front instead of a treble so it gets over cover really well. This thing gets hung up far less than you would ever expect and a tiny treble in the back. So you can run this through heavier cover but you can also yo-yo it, you can rip it, uh, you know, vertical jig it. You can do all sorts of stuff. Tinny rattle. That thing is the jam in spring. Red Eye Shad from Strike King all day freaking long. Blue and chrome. Then we'll downsize with a nice little red guy. One more Red Eye Shad that I'd throw is the craw pattern. A Little bit of a downsize on this one. Gives me some good variation there. Then I would throw in a Booyah Hard Knocker in a natural pattern. Always like having that nice variation of like 
the light colors, the dark colors, and natural colors. Then I'll throw a red one. So we got the six cents. This is the Quake 70, I believe. So there you go. Some red, some natural, some blue and silver. That'll always do the trick. So, so far, lots and lots of hard baits. Let's get to some different stuff. So before we get to the jigs and terminal, there are two baits I throw all year long in the river and they always work, but they really work well in the spring. And that's the Meps Aglia. So we've got the little Black Fury right here and then the Chartreuse and White, two colors that you can't go wrong with. So gotta bring those. Jig wise, love a bladed jigs. There's a lot of wind in the spring and those windy days when I'm throwing chatter baits, money. So right here we have a red, it's called Cajun Fire. And this is from Super K Jigs called the Clacken. But it's a awesome bladed jig, runs true, has a weed guard on it, which is fantastic. Hand tied skirts that do not come off. And I'll love throwing like a little fluke on the back of that uh, just to keep it running in the water column where I want it to. You can also throw out, what also works really well is a little cross style trailer. So if you had some red craw, uh, I think the Big Bite Baits makes a fantastic one that has smaller claws on it. So it runs more true in the water column where you want it to. Always a good choice as well but money, red chatterbait all day. Another chatterbait I would throw around is something bright, something like this chartreuse and purple jackhammer. This is the stealth blade. So the stealth blade I love for when we have finicky bass. So in spring, I got pretty finicky bass. This thing is gonna do work. Throw a little tiny downsized paddle tail on the back of that because it's a little bit of a smaller bladed jig. And then I'll throw a couple finesse jigs. We got two finesse jigs here from Super K Jigs that I love. It's got that spider skirt, which just looks better. It's just a better presentation for this time of year. Uh, also fall and seems to get more bites, but here we've got more of a purple chartreuse and orange and then a green pumpkin orange on this side. Two great colors that I love throwing around right now. For whatever reason, like purple crushes, especially with bass at this time of year. So you'll be seeing me throw a lot of purple. And that's what I caught my four and a half pounder on the other day too. Uh, I'll pair it up with a little craw trailer. So here we have like the Bellows craw, which is fantastic. And this is in a blood red color. So it's a little black and red. So it's gonna pair up nicely with either one of these. So two finesse jigs there. A Little bit lighter, have a football head, so they knock around cover really well. That's why I like throwing them this time of year. And then I'm looking to throw something like a swim jig. So we've got the six cents swim jig right here. This one's in a black light color, a little black, a little purple, a little blue flake. I like a white trailer on that. It seems to just get me bites. And then we've got a Super K jig swim jig here, which is also fantastic. Green pumpkin, some orange highlights in there. A little black and blue and purple. Love it. So some cool color variations. Jigs are small and compact, so we can pack a whole bunch in there. There we go. All right. All right, so now we're getting to more terminal stuff. Did want to call this out though first, so Got some Marabou. Marabou straight does work, man. Marabou is fantastic. And the way it's set up is it's got a little jig head. So if you guys ever jig little finesse paddle tails, you fish it basically the same way. So you can yo-yo it, jig it, you can pause it, you can just dead stick it, you can swim it straight back to the boat. You can do a million things with it. But throwing a couple of these in there as well, never be a bad idea. All right, so as far as terminal though, I try to keep it, <laughs> how much stuff is in here? Like. Try to keep my terminal simple, simple. As far as terminal goes, typically right now with the cover of the foliage being lower uh, in the water, it hasn't fully grown out yet, not until later on in the summer. Uh, I'm throwing drop shots, Ned rigs, and Tokyo rigs. Those are like the main three that I'll do. And they tend to, again, like the reason all these things are in here is because they get me bites. So this is my spring box. This is literally what's in my boat right now. I'm just condensing the boxes into one right now. I do typically, when it's up to me to have more than one box, this is uh, Ned Rigs, Shaky Heads, um, football jigs, rugby jigs, swim jigs. There's a million things in here. So this is like my go-to all the terminal things box. So if we're just condensing, then I'm dropping down to some lighter weight drop shots in a tube style. So here we have some Wu Tungsten. Uh, these are like, that's an eighth of an ounce, I believe. I'll go eighth, quarter, three eighths of an ounce to be a little bit bigger there, but that tube style, pair that up with a little finesse hook, something like this spear point, little tiny one knot, or Daiichi standout drop shot hooks. Love these, probably my favorite hook of all time for drop shots. Then we got the Neds. So for the Neds, 
like an EWG. So this is the Owner Hooks EWG. This one's like three eighths of an ounce. This one right here is like a tenth of an ounce. So I'll throw something light in the lakes so it falls slowly. Current's pretty high in the rivers right now. Go a little bit heavier. So that's what that is for. Otherwise, it stays at the surface. It can't even get down. So EWG, great when you're around heavy cover. These are the two colors I throw right now in the river when it's not heavy cover. So we've got purple, chartreuse, fantastic colors at this time of the year. These are both from Super K Jigs. And again, I'll go a little bit heavier. Uh, so a little bit heavier for me it tends to do the trick. I sort of power finesse it uh, and that works for me. So these two right here are closer to like a sixth of an ounce. I might even go a little bit heavier than that, but these, these are fantastic. So throw those two in there. And finally, throwing in that Tokyo rig. I love this. It, it gets your bait off the ground just a little bit and you put a buoyant plastic on here, lets it float. That's fantastic. Gives you a perfect, like a little horizontal presentation, which if you guys watched any of my ice fishing videos, it's typically what you're doing. Horizontal presentation with those jigs, just hopping it around a little bit, throw a little weight on this wire down here and it's fantastic. So we end up like just off the bottom and above some of that short foliage. So I think that gives you a really good presentation. I love throwing those. Just so we have some other terminal tackle because it's so various and we can do so many things with it. I throw in a couple EWGs, throw in a couple EWGs. So we got a spear point here and then just for the heck of it, a red EWG. And then we'll throw in some three eighths ounce tungstens from Monster Bass because I can do about a billion things with those. We're still only in one box and it's not even that full. This is insane. All right, time for plastics. So carry one bag with me. Typically all spring. This is it. This is that bag. I'm going to show you what's in there real quick. Before I do that, I want to show you this quick pro tip. You guys seem to like it on my Instagram and uh, it landed me a four and a half pounder. So check it out. That is that purple Super K Jigs Ned Head with a turd tickler. This is from Z-Man. It's their little tube style plastic. So it's in that Elastec, hyper durable, insane stuff. Love it. So you set this thing up backwards, right? So tentacles are normally at the bottom. Now they're at the top. Gives you this thick little tail here. Doesn't matter. We're just dead sticking it. And then you can actually take one of the tentacles and shove it over the hook point. So you're semi weedless. Sparse cover, you're good to go. This thing is fantastic. I love it. I'm going to be using it more often. Uh, but that's one of the plastics I have in here. So let's take a look. This one's going to be rapid fire. Drop shot baits. These are the Smalley Smashers, 3.5 inch little worm in like the chartreuse color from Big Bite Baits. We got the Six Sense Flush. This is a little soft plastic jerk bait I'm throwing around or a fluke. Fantastic. This one's in a watermelon gill. So it's like that green pumpkin, which will work fine. The flashy underside. You already knew this was in here. It's the Shark Deuce. Copper truce color from Z-Man. It's your finesse turd. A little different variation, June bug turned ticklers. It's more of a tube style bait. More flukes, let's make great trailers or great for throwing weightless. Zoom super fluke is a classic in that white and silver color. This is a newer fluke I'm excited to try out. So this is from Excite Baits. This one has a very different tail to it. Check that out. It's just gonna have mad different action in green pumpkin. We got some bio baits. Uh, these are just hyper durable. They got a crazy different scent to them in a watermelon color. That's a fluke as well. For my Neds, I've got the Foxtail, Chartreuse Tip, Green Pumpkin on that one. This is Midnight Magic, I think it's called. Yeah, Midnight Magic. It's a black and blue flake. Fantastic for my darker waters. Got this one from Debo the other day. It's just got an insane action tail on it. Check that out. Look at that, that's fantastic. It's from Angler's Choice, a Canadian company. Cool little variation for the Neds, if the Shark Deuce doesn't do it. <laughs> for Craws, we got the Bellows Craw. This one in Green Pumpkin Chartreuse. That one in Blood Red. Keeping things spicy, I got some worms in here too, because you can Tokyo rig or use that Texas rig setup that I loaded in there. So Green Pumpkin June Bug from Gambler. We got some Black and Blue. Six inch, these would be the biggest worm I carry with me. This is a new one from Six Sense. It's a hog walla. So that is a normally a Carolina rig that's a lizard style bait, but we can Texas rig or Tokyo rig that baby. It looks fantastic. And then 
To be constantly varied, we have a Ned Fry here from Six Sense as well. I just love this worm. I think it's fantastic. This one's in a cinnamon crave, so that like purple color to it. One last thing, just going with the chatterbait paraphernalia I threw in before. We got like this white bait fish colored one with red eyes there. This is the Z-Man and it comes with that diesel minnow. So it's indestructible. Great color chatterbait to be thrown right now. There you go. We're done. We did it. We done did it. And that's one box, man. Normally I take more than that. Isn't it crazy how hard it is to just pick a couple things? Now, full disclosure, I normally take all my stuff, but if I were to have one box and I'd be very happy with it, it would be this box. All right, so there we have it. We've got one box to rule them all for spring. We got one bag of plastics. And I mean, this would be easy bank fishing. Any backpack you guys could get, you could fit all this stuff into. So at the end of the day, we got a nice combination of some body baits. We got jigs, we got some terminal tackle in there. Got all sorts of stuff. You get just enough plastics that you need to really cover the full spectrum of things. But with this box, you can cover any water. And that's really the point of it. That's what I made this video for is like where I fish, I have tons of little ponds. We have creeks, we have rivers, we have big lakes. There's all sorts of different water. So if I were to say, hey, you get one box for this spring, it's gonna have to cover all those bodies of water. So if you're in an area where you have really various cover and various bodies of water, then you might wanna consider doing something like this. But I can cover anything with this box and I'm, I'd be stoked to have this out on the water. So, hey, at the end of the day, this is also for you guys. So hopefully this was helpful. As I said in the beginning, hit me up in the comments below with the baits that you're throwing this season. What do you throw in your local bodies of water? What works for you? And if anything in here doesn't work for you or you think it's dumb, you can let me know in the comments too. Uh, I mean, I, I go into everything with a beginner's mindset, even my own channel. So there is no such thing as dogma on this channel. We support all of you. And I'm here to help you if I can. And a lot of you guys help me too. And that's fantastic. I appreciate you guys for that. So there's my spring box. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel, smash a like on this video, ring that notification bell so you can see when we drop more content. And then come hang out with me and my buddy Paul every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. We go live on YouTube. Talk to awesome people in the fishing industry. It's a fun live podcast. Love to see you guys there. Love to talk to you in chat. Hopefully we'll see you on one of our next ones. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you're having a great day and I hope to see you on one of our next videos. Until then, I'll see you out on the water.